All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for staying with us. Uh, I know it's late. Uh, so here today, we are about uh, to talk about the work we've, we, uh, we started around, um, I guess, last March, which is for the uh, EVPN uh, VX handle domain. All right, this is the agenda of the day. So we're going to go through what we've done so far, uh, there's a few challenges that we hit it, and uh, perhaps where we are going next. So right now, <coughs> sorry, uh, the project is standing in the, um, we uh, actually, we have an HLD ready. Uh, it's been merged with uh, the contribution of uh, many of us, including Broadcom and Cisco. Uh, so the PR is there. So we w we want to make sure that you guys know about it because uh, it needs to be reviewed. And uh, all the comments are completely welcome. We have also a SI now HLD, which is public. So again, contribution across uh, everyone here. And uh, it's also like ready for review, so um, <laughs> please. So basically, for the EVPN multi-homing, what we've done is uh, basically we uh, we took uh, all the principles from the the base RC7432, which has the Ethernet segment and uh, DF election and local bias math withdraw, um, and we uh, are currently uh, having uh, code working up and running with all of those principles. So all active is our load balancing preferred scenario to start with. And we also completed with ARP and desynchronization. Um, the implementation fully uh, also supports distributed in CAS gateway. Uh, standard things that we are doing for multi uh, for data centers. So just an example, and that's actually people who already start working on the multi in the uh, with FR. This is exactly the um, what I put here as a topo test there, so you can run this uh, emulation of the network with uh, everything which is uh, VXM assuming to test completely your control plane with FR, but also we do uh, we are also coming with the same uh, for spy test and others, uh, and exactly the same situation where you can test it on real hardware. Okay, so everything which is uh, in green is your layer two stretch. Everything which is in blue is uh, about your verve, so your enter uh, your uh, your routing aspect basically. And I put multiple domains so we can test pretty much all the uh, potential scenario. So if you look at one node, basically, I try to explode a bit here the um, uh, how the architecture how the architecture is is been done. Right, I don't think there's nothing new, but just for people to realize that. Uh, whenever you're setting up VXNAN L2, L3, you had that uh, list of standing blocks on top of each other. So you start with L2 for what, what I'm calling the bridge, uh, the broadcast domain access, right? And they are tied up with an L2 VNI for your stretch. Um, then you have your SVI, which is your gateway for your host, connected to your verve. And uh, with VXNAN, it mandates the usage of uh, another bridge for your L3. So this is what you're seeing at the top. So you tie this up together, and what we are doing to uh, to make the multi homing working is we are pretty much synchronizing information between the two nodes, which is for your ARP and D and uh, L2. So, yep. Thanks, Patrice. Um, so the next few slides, um, I'm going to talk about the building blocks for implementing EVPN multi homing and Sonic. Um, this is the same uh, diagram that you see in the previous slide that, that, that Patrice was showing. It's just that it does not have the layer three concepts. I mean, the, the layer three VNI um, and the worth and all that. Because if you see more or less, EVPN multi-homing is all about layer two. Uh, for layer three, if more than one VTEP, multiple VTEPs are advertising the same prefix, you form layer three CMP. Um, whereas in case of multi-homing, if the MAC is being advertised by uh, an Ethernet segment, which is multi-homed and multiple VTEPs, we are supposed to form layer two ECMP. So the concept of layer two ECMP does not exist right now. Um, we um, we are, we have added uh, uh, the support in the SI. Um, uh, there was one review which was last week, another review which is going to happen next week. Um, uh, if you see here the type one route, which is uh, nothing but the auto discovery route uh, carrying the ESI. Um, when it is being received by, say, VTEP3, um, uh, VTEP3 knows that a given Ethernet segment is multi-homed, and it is multi-homed by all of the VTEPs which are advertising that route. 
Um, so it creates the layer to an extra group uh, beforehand, even before the Mac actually comes in. Um, later when the Mac is learned in this diagram, say we have one learns this Mac address, um, and it comes with the specific ESI. Uh, the layer two next subgroup is already created uh, in the hardware, um, and the Mac just goes and starts point pointing to that uh, layer two next subgroup. Um, I mean, if you look from the hardware point of view, this is how the hardware uh, entries are going to look like. So the Mac is pointing to a layer two next subgroup, uh, and the layer two next subgroup has uh, two VTEPs, VTEP one and two. And if the host two in this diagram, if it is sending multiple flows, um, you will see that the traffic will start to get load balanced across uh, across the, the VTEPs which are multi-homing that ESI. Uh, the second bending block is uh, uh, more or less around the handling of the bump traffic. Um, uh, it's a little interesting here, you can see that the traffic, there are two traffic strains being shown. One is coming from the um, from the single home device, which is host one here, and other from uh, the multi-home device. The local bias makes sure that the traffic is flooded onto all of the local interfaces, um, including the external tunnels. Um, and then because of ingress replication, the packet will be sent out to each and every other VTAP. So in this case, the packet which was already flooded on VTAP one is being received on VTAP two. And now VTAP two should not be sending this, these, uh, these two flows out onto the ESI, um, the, the shared ethernet segment, because the flooding has already happened on VTAP one. Um, and this has to be controlled using the split horizon. Uh, so the SI already support isolation groups, create the isolation groups, um, make that lag as the member or the ESI you call it, um, and set that isolation group on the uh, on the P2P tunnel uh, to VTEP1. So both VTEP1 and VTEP2 will actually isolate themselves um, that any traffic which is coming from VTEP1 will not be sent out onto the uh, shared Ethernet segments. Um, another um, building block is the designated forward. Um, uh, this is another special case. You can see that the traffic is coming in from the remote VTAP. And because of, again, ingress replication, it gets um, replicated to both VTAP 1 and 2. Um, and uh, if you see here, the the node, uh, the host 1, is actually multi-home to both VTAP 1 and 2. So if both of these forward, then there will be duplicate frames. Um, and the way to achieve is by electing the uh, designated forwarder, so 7432, RFC 7432 already talked about, talks about it. It's just that the question is how do we achieve uh, in the hardware? Um, so we have added new attributes uh, for the bomb as well as the single active and uh, you know to control the unicast and uh, the bomb traffic. Um, by default, the DF role is enabled. Um, if it is not a DF, you say that you know it is not a DF and then the, the traffic will be blocked. Um, even though this slide looks a little complicated, it is not. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you can see there are two sequence of diagrams, uh, one on the top and another on the bottom. Uh, it shows the same failure scenario, which is the, uh, the shared Ethernet segment is failing. Um, it's just that on the top one, you see the traffic is coming in from a remote VTAP, um, and the remote VTAP chose a VTAP one to load balance it. Um, and then suddenly the Ethernet segment link goes down. Um, and the VTAP1, what it is going to do is, is the first thing it is going to do is withdraw the AD route. And that withdrawal will go to the other VTAPs. So here VTAP3 will receive that AD route withdrawal and will remove VTAP1 from the layer 2 next subgroup. And that's when the traffic will diverge from VTAP1 to VTAP2. But until the VTAP3 processes that AD route withdrawal, the traffic will continue to go to VTAP1 and then you know, it will get dropped. The second scenario is the same kind of link failure, just that the traffic is coming in from a single host, I mean single home to host. Um, and because the shared Ethernet segment is local to the um, VTAP1, the, it's a unicast traffic by the way, so it gets forwarded to the local interface. And then suddenly the link fails. 
Um, in this case, the Mac, which is already pointing to the local interface, will have to now point to the remote VTAP. So the Mac has to be reprogrammed. And during that time, whatever uh, uh, traffic was supposed to go out on the local interface, because the interface is down, um, it will get dropped. And eventually, when the Mac is reprogrammed, the traffic will start to uh, you know, go to the remote VTAP. Um, so these are the, the base concepts from the base RFC 7432. It does not talk about, say, the backup next top group and uh, some of the optimizations which are required to handle uh, some of these scenarios. Uh, we did some convergence uh, testing, um, and these are uh, some of the, the numbers that we got. Um, it's a simple diagram. If you see, um, uh, same setup, just that uh, there are two flows. One is from host one to host two, and from host two to host one. And there are two types of failures. One is the link failure, and other is the, uh, the VTAP failure. The first row, the, the link down, um, if you see the traffic which is coming from host one, because it's a local link failure, um, the lag automatically switches over uh, and immediately switches over to the other VTAP. Um, however, for the traffic which is coming from host two, it is a remote link failure. And the 1.9 second delay is attributed to the processing time for the AD route withdrawal. Um, similarly, when the link comes up, um, the Mac is already pointing to the, the backup or the remote VTAP, and then the local link comes up. This because of split horizon, the traffic will not be switched from one VXLAN tunnel to another VXLAN tunnel, so it has to wait for the Mac to get reprogrammed pointing to the local interface. Um, in case of VTAP power off, um, you can think of that the spines are the ones which have to withdraw the route towards VTAP 3 um, when VTAP 1 goes down. And uh, now the mass withdrawal that RFC 7432 um, is, you know, may no longer be effective because when the link goes down uh, between the spine and the VTAP, uh, you have to withdraw all of the routes, including order discovery route and the MAC address and all that. So it, the AD route is embedded within, you know, a, a pile of updates which are going in. And eventually, you may see that you know things are getting processed one by one. Um, so there, there's there will be some delay there as well. Um, so next few slides, Patrice, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it back to him, and he's going to talk about some of the optimizations that we, we can um, add to the base EVP and Maldahim implementation. Patrice. All right, so all of that to say, this is taking a long time, right? It's really like boring, to be honest. That's why he's talking 10 minutes about it, because everything is long whenever you're relying on the BGP and the control plane to <laughs> rewrite your packet on your network. So if each time you have a local decision to make, it will be much faster because you don't need to wait for BGP, he's waking up, the CPU sending the message, all of that, right? And that's why the 10 minutes went on, right? So basically, um, this is exactly what he just explained, but what we want to do is really the fast reroute like this. So therefore, this we take out the BGP, he will fix up your control, in the your control plane will fix up everything afterwards, but in the meantime, just reroute it. So there's like various techniques which are described in the draft here, and um, just be aware that split arising group might block you. Uh, you need to make sure you're not bouncing back also your reroute, but it's all is explained there. So I truly believe that each time you have a local decision is better, and this is why also I will do some, uh, some uh, promotion here that we do also BGP pick as part of the, the Sonic routing work group. And I think it's also fairly important that people are getting involved there as well because uh, fast reroute is one of them. Uh, multi homing also, BGB pick is part of that. There was also on the previous speaker, he was talking about the uh, uplink tracking. It's another also things that needs to work. All of that needs to come all together. Uh, if you just do this, it's not sufficient. You need pick, you need uplink tracking as well. That's what I'm trying to say. So, but the fast reroute is definitely there. Uh, it's part of the new SI, all the capabilities are, are enabled to, uh, to fulfill the requirements. All right, now, when I want to bring you, when I where, I want, uh, sorry, where I want to bring your mind is on the next things that's going to come up, right? Because see, even though we are uh, saying, oh, it's VXN multi -oming, FOSS is more like multi -oming as a service. You, you can see it as just a service that you can sell instead of, see, you can sell L2 service, you can sell an L3 service, the VXN but just multi-homing as well, right? Quite often, like, 
you know, a lot of people are deploying the IP fabric with, with Sonic, and they are asking me, hey, uh, we need NCLAG. Hey, no, you don't, <laughs> okay? You can use this, right? Just, you just need to see multi-homing Multi as a replacement of the MC lag, you, don't need, you won't need the XNAN. It will work for any type of setup. You can just, uh, like I'm showing on the right side, you can just be pure L3. You don't need L2, right? If you just want to do um, same thing, but no L2 connectivity, it's going to work. So, but we need help also on that, right? So the con but the concept is fairly simple. It works exactly the same. You can do reroute, you can do whatever you want, but it's purely L3. Or you can keep the L2 and just do a pure L2 data center if you prefer. It's gonna work as well. It can work for V4, V6, you know. Just see it as a service. Don't get stuck with the fact that it's tightly coupled with VXNAN because it's not true as a technology. Yep, yep. All right, call for action. We need people at the Sonic Routing Work Group. That's the first one I didn't write it, right? We should, have, we should <laughs> that should be the first one. Please show up, we need your help, right? Uh, if you wait for us to do everything for you, it's not cool. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> that's not how that works here. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, uh, again, we talk about the HLD, right? Um, the side documentation is ready, so please review and very soon, uh, actually, we're going to bet on who's going to do that first, but uh, <laughs> we're going to have code PR coming up very, very soon with that. all of that work. BGP pick as well, right? We need stuff. We need help, guys. You need reviewing. And please uh, come to the Sonic Work Group. Right? Yep. Um, I just want to add that, you know, AVPN multi-homing is enabling a few other new use cases, um, including multi-site. We're going to talk about that in the additional workshop on Friday. Yep. Yeah, it's just the foundation for something, right? Everyone knows about it, but we need to move on, so help. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.